Now to Canberra. The Treasurer, Josh Frydenberg, is delivering the mid-year economic and fiscal outlook. Finance Minister. I'm going to make an opening statement, followed by him, and then we're happy to take some questions. Today, Australia has seen an incredible set of job numbers, far exceeding market expectations. The unemployment rate has fallen to 4.6%. It was 5.7 per cent under Labor when we came to government. More than 366,000 jobs have been created, a monthly record. Almost 60 per cent of these jobs went to women and about a third of the jobs to young people. Employment is now at a record high, with 180,000 more people in work today than at the start of the pandemic. And I repeat that. Employment is at a record high, with 180,000 more people in work today than at the start of the pandemic. This result belongs to all Australians who have sacrificed so much over the last two years. It shows that the Morrison government's economic plan is working. Today's budget update further confirms that the Australian economy is rebounding strongly, having outperformed every major advanced economy throughout the COVID pandemic. Despite the impact of Delta, which saw 13 million of our fellow Australians subject to an extended lockdown, today's updated numbers show a stronger outlook than what was forecast in May. Real GDP is expected to grow by 4.5% in 2021 and by four and a quarter percent in 2022, reflecting strong and broad-based momentum across the economy. Tax cuts for families are boosting household incomes, with household consumption set to increase at its fastest pace in more than two decades. Temporary tax incentives are driving the strongest increase in business investment since the mining boom, with non-mining investment forecast to reach record levels. And on the back of the strong economic recovery, the unemployment rate is forecast to fall to 4.5% by mid next year. with the unemployment rate falling to 4.5%. This would be the first time since before the global financial crisis that Australia has sustained an unemployment rate at below 5% and only the second time since the 1970s. The rapid recovery from the Delta lockdowns is expected to see the creation of around 1 million new jobs by the end of the forecast period, which is around 150,000 more jobs than was forecast at budget. The employment to population ratio is expected to reach a record high next year. But these gains are not yet locked in. The pandemic is still with us and we must continue to learn with the, live with the virus as demonstrated by the recent emergence of the Omicron variant. We must also continue to stick to the plan that has seen Australia enjoy world-leading health and economic outcomes during this crisis. No country is better placed to face the challenges presented by the pandemic, and Australians can look to next year with hope, optimism and confidence. Our vaccination rates are amongst the highest in the world. The nation is lockdown free. Consumers are spending, businesses are investing, and the jobs are coming back. 
As a result of the improvements in the economic outlook, the fiscal outlook has also improved across the four years of our forward estimates. The underlying cash balance in 21-22 is expected to be a deficit of $99.2 billion or 4.5% of GDP, a $7.4 billion improvement since the 21-22 budget. And across the forwards, the budget is $2.3 billion better off than forecast in this year's budget. The improved budget position is being driven by the stronger than expected recovery in our labour market. The combination of higher incomes, more people in work, less people on welfare has contributed $50 billion to the budget bottom line since May. Company tax is also contributing an additional $36.8 billion over the four years to 24-25 off the back of record terms of trade, with prices for Australia's key commodity exports having reached record highs in recent months. Notwithstanding this upgrade to revenue driven by a stronger economy, the government continues to reduce taxes. And this is reflected in the tax to GDP ratio, which is expected to decline by almost one percentage point across the forward estimates to support a private sector led recovery. On the payment side, the government has continued to support households and businesses through these lockdowns and the COVID health restrictions, while continuing to guarantee the essential services Australians rely on. In response to the Delta outbreak, the government provided a further $25 billion in direct economic and health support, bringing our total pandemic support to around $337 billion, or 16.3% of GDP. This included more than $7.3 billion in business support payments and $12.6 billion in payments to more than 2 million Australians through the COVID disaster payment, and further investments totalling $2.9 billion in our health system to ensure Australia continues to have the world's best health outcomes. A stronger economy has also enabled the government to continue to guarantee the essential services that Australians rely on, with a further $26.4 billion being provided in my EFO to the NDIS to ensure that those with a permanent and significant disability continue to receive the necessary support. This budget also includes further investments to grow our economy and create jobs, investments to make it easier for vulnerable Australians to participate in the workforce, to support a stronger labour market recovery and to build the skill sets that Australia's economy needs. My EFO includes an additional $2.3 billion of commitments to new and existing infrastructure projects which will help support jobs and the economic recovery. There's further investments in the digital economy, as well as to help the agricultural sector reach its goal of increasing output to $100 billion by 2030. Higher revenues from a stronger economy have been largely offset, though, by the cost of the Delta outbreak and the growth in the NDIS. This still sees the underlying cash balance improving, as I said, this year by $7.4 billion compared to budget which builds on the $80 billion improvement we saw in last year's final budget outcome. Consistent with what we forecast in May as a share of the economy, the budget deficits halve over the next four years. The stronger economy and improved fiscal outlook has reduced debt levels across every year of the forward estimates. In 21-22, a loan gross debt is expected to be $44 billion lower than expected in the May budget. And even at its peak, Australia's gross debt levels remain less than half the average seen across G20 economies. In conclusion, Australians have, a pl have good reason to be optimistic about their future. Our plan is working. And in the face of the largest economic shock since the Great Depression, working together, we have been doing what has been needed to be done. 
Australians should be incredibly proud of what they have achieved. They have come forward in record numbers to be vaccinated. The Australian economy is rebounding strongly. The jobs are coming back in record numbers. We have avoided the labour market scarring evident in prior recessions. Confidence is up, businesses are investing and the next phase of our economic recovery plan will be set out in next year's budget. It will be guided by our fiscal strategy, a strategy that will see unemployment sustained at levels not seen in this country since the Howard and Costello era. Our plan will lock in the recovery and set Australia up for many years to come. Simon.